Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video of the 5% series for Game Week 33. The idea being you follow these guidelines and hopefully by the end of the series your team are finishing the top 5% which should be good enough to finish very near the top or possibly even top of many leagues with maybe 20 people or fewer in them. 20 teams that is. Okay let's see how Game Week 32 could have gone for you and what the instructions are for Game Week 33. Goalkeepers, you'd have scored from one of these six. De Gea, who didn't play. Raya got two points. Ramsdale got two. Pope got two. Kepa didn't play. And Meslier got three. So you'd have averaged 2.3 from your keeper. For the first set of defenders, you'd have played two or three of these. Trent for five. Van Dijk for one. Trippier for two. Chilwell didn't play. James didn't play. Shaw didn't play. Gabriel 1, Zinchenko 0. So that was an average of 3.6 for your 2 or 3. I'm assuming 2, just so you know. And then of these defenders, you'd have had 2 or 3 of me for 2. Estupinion, took a long time to say that, seeing as he didn't even play. Aguard 5, Botman 2, Pinnock 2, Castagna 10, Fofana didn't play, Canate 1. That was an average of 7.3. Midfielders, Salah, 7, Fernandes didn't play, Saka, 13, Madison didn't play, Grealish didn't play, Gakpo, 1, Rashford didn't play, Odegaard, 7. So that was an average of 14. Second set of midfielders, Martinelli, 9, Gibbs White, 12, McAllister didn't play, Matoma didn't play, March didn't play, Jensen, 2, Somerville, 2. So that was an average of 12.5. You would have had one or two of these forwards. Haaland didn't play. Kane, 6. Darwin, 1. Jesus, 2. Tony, 9. Felix didn't play. That's an average of 4.5. You'd have had one or two of these forwards. Watkins, 1. Isaac, 13. Ings, 1. And Buemo, 7. Johnson, 1. That's an average of 4.6. And the captains, you'd have had probably one of these captains. So we count their points again because they're doubled. Salah, Saka, Martinelli, Jesus, Gakpo and Trent for 7, 13, 9, 2, 1 and 5. So that's an average of 6.2 points. The global average for this game week, 32, was 42 points. And of course it was low because many teams just couldn't get 11 players out or maybe even 10, 9. I saw several teams that were woefully short of players. That's why it was dragged so low. If you pick the worst possible players from this system, you could have got 21 points. The average was 55, which is a fair bit above the global average, but 55 would have almost certainly been a red arrow for you if you'd scored that. And then the maximum was 101 points you could have got of this system. And I checked the teams that I know are following this, and those that are strictly following it, and have been from the beginning, they got green arrows, they're still in the top 5%. Those that were late to the party, or I know have messed up a couple of weeks because they played the chips wrong, they maybe didn't do quite so well. But overall, everyone's around about the 5-6% mark, or a little bit better, so that's that's nice. 629 subscribers to this channel. Thank you very much to, has, to everyone who has subscribed. Thank you for watching it, and all your support is appreciated. So transfer talk. We've got the last blank game week of the season out of the way, hopefully. We're about to go into game week 33. But in game week 34, there are a number of teams doubling. And we now know which teams are also doubling in game week 36 and game week 37. So I'm now going to look at the players we have within this system and make some comments on what you may or may not want to do. And I've marked some of them with cards as follow. If I give them a green card, it means I highly recommend, if possible, get this player in, but you don't have to. Yellow is a good shout. Get this player in, possibly when you're shuffling players about the orange ones aren't necessarily get rid of these but these would be good players to move on in order to facilitate getting the green players or possibly the yellow ones now you're not you're probably not going to be able to get all the green ones i say because otherwise you'd be taking loads of hits and it's not worth taking lots of negative points to change your team around but with three double game weeks coming up in the next four weeks say four or five weeks it's absolutely fine to be taking some hits to make your team better. So if you end up taking a minus four, minus eight, 
possibly even at a stretch minus 12 if your team needs it, it should be worth it over the next few game weeks, even though you probably won't make it back in this next game week, game week 33. Something else to keep in mind, there are no doubles in game week 33. So on the one hand, you might not want to make lots of subs this week or even any subs and concentrate on game week 34. The reason for delaying your subs till game week 34 is a player may get injured in game week 33 and you don't want to bring a player in and they break their leg, then you have to do another transfer. But the reason to do the transfers now is because of price changes. A lot of the players I'm going to show you that are green or possibly yellow will almost certainly be going up in price the next two or three weeks. So if you can just about afford it now, you should probably do the transfers now. But if you look at the transfers you want to make and you've still got a million in the bank, then if you want to wait another game week just because of injuries, that's fine also. I hope that made sense. I thought it was a bit long. So the keepers, we have Pope De Gea, Ramsdale, Kepa, Raya, Meslier. De Gea doubles in 34, Pope doubles in 36, and De Gea doubles in 37, as does Kepa. But I would suggest you don't need to make any transfers on your goalkeepers. I would, if you've got nothing else to do, I still wouldn't go changing any of your goalkeepers. I just put it out there for completeness. Now, the first place of defenders... We have Trippier, Trent, Shaw, Van Dyke, Gabriel, Zinchenko, James and Chilwell. Of these, Trent doubles in 34, Shaw doubles in 34, Van Dyke doubles in 34, Trippier doubles in 36, Shaw doubles in 37, James and Chilwell both double in 37. My transfer suggestions are you really want to get Trippier in your team, even if he doesn't do very well. So many people have him, it's going to hurt you on the one or two weeks that he does do really well. If you can afford to get Trent in, it's absolutely worth getting him in. And I'll be showing you different players later on you might want to sell to finance him. Shaw's not as expensive as Trent and he is worth having. Not worth crippling your team over, but he's worth having. Gabriel and Zinchenko, both very, very good players. But these are worth selling if you either need the space in defence or you want to release a little bit of money. So you're going to have two or three from this page of defenders and two or three from the other page of defenders. It may be you want, you've want you got currently three from this page and you want to sell Zinchenko and or Gabriel and get a third one from the second page just to free up some funds. Hopefully that made sense. Obviously, if for your team you want to have none from this page and five defenders from the next page, because it helps your system, that's fine. But for the sake of the weekly scoring, I'm just going to assume you've got two or three from this page. So what I'm saying is, supposing you want to get Trippier from this page, and that's all, and then four from the other defenders, that's okay. The second page defenders, we have Canate, Estubinen, Botman, Fafana, Me, Pinnock, Aguard, and Castagna. Of these, Canate doubles in 34, as does Estepinian as does Aguard, and then Estupinion doubles in 36, as does Botman, Estupinion doubles in 37, as does Fofana. So my recommendations here are, if you can get an Estupinion, he's absolutely worth getting, unless you already have three Brighton players, or you want to go for three different Brighton players. But he's quite cheap, and because of the three double game weeks, he's absolutely worth having. Canate, I've made him yellow, because he's cheap. He has got a double coming up, but it might be, for example, you sell Gabriel and get in Canate and that releases some of your funds. But he's a perfectly good player. And I've got Castagna yellow for the same reason. Probably won't score as many points between now and the end of the season as Canate, but he is cheap and he's all right and he is a little bit attacking. And I've said me and Pinnock, although they're cheap, if you need to free up some space in your defenders for someone else, I'd say those two are worth moving on. Midfielders, Salah, Fernandes, Grealish, Rashford, Saka, Gakpo, Odegaard, Madison. Salah doubles in 34, as does Fernandes, as does Grealish, as does Rashford, as does Gakpo. Fernandes doubles in 37, as does Grealish, as does Rashford. So my recommendations here are, if you possibly can get Salah in, who is very expensive, get him in. And I realise some of you are going to have to make maybe two, three, four subs to do these things I'm suggesting. But you completely don't have to. And if you decide you want to go without him because there's someone else you'd rather have, that's fine as well. 
Rashford is absolutely worth getting in because he's quite cheap. He's very highly owned. He's got a good chance of getting a good amount of points. I've made Fernandez yellow, even though he may well be the highest scoring player between now and the end of the season on this page. He is quite expensive and he's not as highly owned as Salah, which is why if you could afford one of them, and I know Salah's more expensive, Salah is the safest pick. I've made Grealish yellow as well. The only downside with Grealish is because of the Pep Roulette, the Man City manager, we can never be too sure that Grealish is going to start and play when he's fit, although he probably will. Whereas Fernandez, Salah, Rashford, if they're fit, they're starting. And Salah and Fernandez, you're going to get 90 minutes out nearly every game week. Madison is fine to move on. I know he was sick last game week, so he didn't play, but he wasn't actually injured as far as we know. But he is quite expensive, so it will free up a spot and it will free up some space. And any of those other three, if you want to move them on because it frees up a bit of money, that's fine. The second set of midfielders, you have March, Matoma, McAllister, Martinelli, Gibbs White, Jensen, Somerville. So this is the cheaper page of midfielders. Of these, March, Matoma, McAllister, Dublin 34. They also double in 36. They also double in 37. So off this page, obviously March and Matoma, I think, are worth getting. And McAllister, I've made McAllister yellow purely because the way Brighton have their current injuries, he may be playing slightly more defensive, which means apart from penalties, he's less likely to be attacking. But it may be Deserby sorts it all out and he's back in a very attacking role uh, midweek when he plays the next game. So he's yellow, but only slightly yellow. You could think of him as green. So there's four Brighton players in this system, these three and the defender Estupinen. I highly recommend, if possible, get three of them in because they double three times between now and the end of the season and they're all pretty cheap for what they can do. But again, you don't have to. I just highly recommend you get three of these four. And then Gibbs White, although he's a good player and he's playing an attacking role, if you need to free up space and you've got Gibbs White, he might be one you want to move on. The same for Jensen, the same for Somerville. Those three are cheap though. So you'd only move those on to make the space available. You wouldn't move them on to try and free up money. At a push, you could sell Martinelli to free up the space and get some money. But he is highly owned and he's a very good player. He could score against anyone. So I'd be reluctant to sell him. But you can if you want to. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> the forwards, Harland, Kane, Tony, Darwin, Jesus, Felix... Harlan doubles in 34, as does Darwin. Harlan doubles in 37, as does Felix. If at all possible, and even if it costs you a lot of transfers to sort it out, you need to get Harlan in. He's going to hurt you so much for all the times he gets high scores and everyone else has got him and you haven't. So they are playing Arsenal this week, albeit at home. He's probably going to get a return this week, but if he doesn't, certainly after this week you want him but now may be the time to shuffle things around. So I've suggested Kane, although he's a good player and he seems to score five, six, seven points week after week, he does take up a spot and there's a lot of money in him, so it's worth moving him on if it helps you finance things. The same with Darwin. Darwin is very good, but it looks like he's going to be coming on most games, perhaps. He might only be getting 20 minutes. So he does take up a space and he does take up money. It's fine to move him on, even though he doubles in 34. The same with Jesus. He, he's 8 point something million, I think. He's taking up a space. And the same with Felix. And he's even got a double game week coming up. So any of those that are orange, you might want to sell those and maybe buy a cheaper striker just to free up some funds and do things. But again, if you want to keep them, then they're fine. All four of those that in orange could score one, two or three goals between now and the end of the season. I've not highlighted Tony on this simply because he's cheap. He's not going to free up much money. But if you want to move him on, that's fine. The second set of strikers, we have Watkins, Isaac, Ings, Johnson and Bremo. These are the cheap lot. Of these, Ings doubles in 34, Isaac doubles in 36. My recommendation is you want to get Isaac in. He's got the double coming up and he's relatively cheap. So, for example, Darwin to Isaac or Kane to Isaac, they're good moves. Isaac's probably going to score more than either of those, I'm going to say, and he's cheaper. So it frees up funds to do something else. 
any of those, I would keep hold of Watkins. So of Ings and Bremo Johnson, you would only move those on to make a space. You wouldn't move them on to free up the money, probably. Game week 33 then. So for the benching options, that's the transfers out of the way. What we do for the benching, I tell you who to put on the bench. And that therefore says who's going to be your starting 11. So if you have Ramsdale, they're away to Man City after this week. I suggest he's the keeper you put on your bench. If you don't have Ramsdale, but you have Raya, put him on your bench. If you have neither of those two, but Kepa, he's on your bench. If you have none of those threes, but you have De Gea, he's on your bench. If you have none of those, but Meslier, put him on your bench. Which means if you've got Pope, you're definitely playing him. Now, I realise Meslier did make a couple of mistakes last game week. I realise it is Leeds. But taking into account who the other keepers, four keepers below him are playing... I do think Meslier's got a reasonable chance of getting as many points as any of the other four, possibly even more points. They are playing Leicester, but Leicester are Leicester do seem to be playing better now that they've got the new manager in place. So apart from Pope, any of those five are all pretty much of a muchness this week. So I'm now going to show you nine players, I think it is. The first player I show you that you have goes position three on your bench, the second one position two, the third one position one, as long, of course, it's a legal formation, so you can't put three defenders on your bench. And then if you've still not got enough players on your bench after this, I'll try and make a couple of generic suggestions. So Aguard on your bench, if you've got him. Next choice would be Somerville, Ings, Jensen, Pinnock, Me, Gibbs-White, Darwin and Bremo. And Darwin's there purely because I think he's probably not going to be getting the minutes. So if you still don't have three players on your bench, then I'd say if you've still got space to put a defender on there and you've got more than one player from the same team with your defender and goalkeeper combined, then I'd say put your cheapest defender of those on your bench. For example, if you've got Kepa and Chilwell, maybe put Chilwell on your bench. If you've got Pope and Botman, put Botman on your bench. The only exception is don't put Trippier on your bench. I would still keep Trippier. Apart from that, if you've got two defenders, you've got Botman and Trippier from Newcastle. Botman goes on your bench. You've got Chilwell and James from Chelsea. That's probably Chilwell on your bench. Obviously, they could score well. The thing with this system is any week, any of these players obviously could score very well. So we're always risking putting decent points on your bench. If you uh, still haven't got a full bench, I'd say put your cheapest defender that's available on the bench. If you still haven't got a full bench, then put your cheapest outfield player, which is midfielder or striker, on your bench until your bench is full and then hopefully you're going to be all right. And hopefully that made sense. Captains. I would suggest if you've got Haaland, he'd be my first choice to be wearing the old mule hat. But you don't have to. I'm going to show you six players I suggest you choose one of these as your captain and another one as your vice captain. So if you've got Kane, he's a good choice for this week to wear the old mule hat. If you haven't got him but you've got Salah, he's a good choice. Other possibilities would be Rashford, Watkins or any of the Brighton midfielders you might happen to have. I know I've included McAllister in here but he is on penalty so if they get a penalty he's got a very good chance. That's my preferred order. You can choose any two of these to be your captain vice captain. If you haven't got anyone from this page that's still on here, then I'd say go for your most expensive attacking player who's still playing. Yeah, I would do that, I think. And then you will have a captain and a vice captain. So sorry if that was a bit long again. <laughs> it's these double game weeks and blank game weeks. They, they really cost me a lot of time trying to work it all out and say what I think you should do. So it's fine to take hits this week and or next game week. Beware that this next game week starts tomorrow. That's Tuesday. I think it might be six o'clock the cutoff, which is why I've had to get this video out now. Then there'll be another video later this week for Game Week 34, which would be starting, I don't know, Friday or Saturday. I should have checked, I guess. Thank you very much for watching. I'll try and make sure I check and reply to any comments before the deadline. So if you need any help, just pop it in there. Otherwise, you can get me on Twitter at Midnight Mule FPL. I think it's my handle or Midnight Mule. One of the two. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>